The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. All right. Uh, I want to welcome you to our Wednesday Bible study. And I thank God for the privilege to be alive and uh, to be able to uh, share this opportunity for Bible study uh, with God's people. All right. Um, to God uh, be the glory. So, uh, again, uh, God bless you. Uh, for the opportunity. So we thank God that uh, we are able to uh, study God's words together. So I will invite you to get your Bible uh, and then uh, go straight to chapter 8 of the book of Amos. We will see, uh, uh, emphasize some uh, 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 lessons uh, of chapter 8 chapter 8 of the book of Amos again the Lord be with you welcome to our Wednesday Bible study we are in uh, the book of Amos chapter 8 we're still studying the book of Amos a very interesting uh, book of the Bible very relevant to our context today all right to God be the glory okay the Lord be with you. Again, welcome to our Wednesday Bible study. We are in chapter 8 of the book of Amos. Book of Amos, chapter 8. And those of you who will be available uh, uh, this uh, evening around uh, 6 o'clock, uh, uh, we are going to have uh, our Zoom uh, discussion. Uh, so you are invited to join us for our Zoom discussion. Uh, we will be uh, discussing, giving uh, insight, you know, uh, whatever you have read, so you'll be able to also share with us. So good morning. Uh, the Lord be with you. Again, we are in the book of Amos uh, chapter 8. All right. Let's start our session with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you praise and we thank you uh, for you have given us the privilege to be among the living today. Uh, for the grace of being alive, we say thank you. We say thank you uh, because you renew your grace, your compassion, and your love every morning. So we receive that love of God that is beyond all human understanding. Dear God, we give you praise because John, cha John chapter 3 verse 16 is still true. For God so loved the world that God gave his son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Oh, we celebrate that great love and we uh, speak that word for our brothers, for our sisters, for those who know you and those who do not know you. Uh, we pray, oh God, as we intercede for one another, that that word will be applicable again today. That we will receive and celebrate the love of God. We thank you for that love. Because of the love of God, Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. And he died, he paid the price for our sins. He died for our sins and he rose so that we may be justified. So we thank you for the privilege you have given us to know you. So dear God, we pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we are studying the book of Amos. Continue to speak to your church, encourage us, and help us to be prepared. Help us to prepare ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. All right? So, again, my brothers and my sisters, what a blessing uh, to be among the living and to be able uh, to continue our Bible study. Okay, we are in chapter 8 of the book of Amos. In this chapter, we see, again, God is giving a vision of his judgment to Amos. Now, the context of the book of Amos, as you know, God is not pleased with the corruption that is taking place in the land. God is not pleased with the dishonesty uh, that is taking place, the cheating, uh, the abuse of uh, power, the uh, abuse of poor and, 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 and the oppressed. God is not pleased with what is taking place in the land. Israel became a powerful nation. They were blessed uh, military, uh, economically. That was a time of uh, economic prosperity. Uh, something happened 
people have forgotten about the basic of, Christ, uh, of, 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 of their religion. They have forgotten about the basic of religion. Uh, they were concerned about the rituals. You know, they were uh, practicing an outward religion instead of allowing that religion to transform their heart. Because God is uh, reproaching this nation that there is no justice in the land. You are mistreating the poor. You are not treating the poor right. And because of their love for prosperity, their love for profit and money, they even began to practice uh, a, a kind of uh, uh, slavery within their own uh, land, whereby uh, a person will work for a, a rich person, and if they are not able to pay, uh, they are not able to pay uh, what they owe to the rich man. The rich man had the right to take them and resell their own brothers and sisters as a slave in the land. So that's a practice of corruption that God did not like uh, during this time. And God is uh, bringing the prophet Amos from the south to prophesy in the north, northern kingdom. And he's saying to Israel, let justice roll down like waters. God is inviting the people of God to say, you need to practice corrective action. Uh, take some corrective action to change the injustice that is in the land. Because if you do not do that, I'm going to judge you. So already in chapter uh, 7 and chapter 8 and 9, you see God is giving Amos vision of judgment. So we saw last uh, uh, Wednesday that in chapter 7, uh, Amos was even interceding, you know, trying to uh, pray for the people that God will spare them. Uh, and, and, and in chapter 8 here, God is giving again that vision of uh, judgment to Amos. You start in uh, verse 1, uh, 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 2 and 3 of chapter 8. God is giving an image of a basket of ripe fruit. The basket of ripe fruit. All right. That's, say the Lord, if you go to chapter 8, uh, verses 1 through 8, 1 through uh, 3. Amos chapter 8, verses 1, 2, and 3. That says the Lord. The Lord showed me, behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what do you see? So I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. And the songs of the temple shall be willing in that day so here we see god is giving an image of a basket of ripe fruit and we all know uh, uh summer fruit summer fruit you know they are already ripe they are ready and they also get rotten quickly and they are ready to be thrown away so so in this vision god is saying to uh, amos that uh uh, the time has come, I'm going to judge, I'm going to judge my people, you know, uh, the time was short for Israel, that if they do not repent, if they do not repent, I'm going to judge them, and you see in the judgment there, God is saying many dead bodies everywhere, so, so, so in this vision, Amos is seeing dead body everywhere, God is saying, I'm going to judge this land. I'm going to punish them. The time has arrived. This is the end. They need to change. So, 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 so we see the time that the, the, the time was, it was a time of agency. Israel had to receive the word of God and act on the word of God instead of not considering the word of God. So, God is saying to Amos, I'm going to judge. I'm going to judge this land. I'm going to punish them. That there will be, uh, 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 they, they, will be judgment. Uh, and this judgment is showing this dead body uh, everywhere. I say that they will be throwing dead body in silence. And, 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 and the songs of the temple shall be uh, wailing in that day. People are going to cry and, 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 and the kind of... Uh, image of suffering and misery in the land all this because of the corruption that is taking place in the land because of the dishonesty the cheating 
the religious apostasy because when all this corruption is taking place, the religious institution is also corrupted. That's, that's the challenging part. The religious institution, which was supposed to be the conscience of the nation, because it was the religious, the temple, uh, was supposed to be the conscience of the nation. To speak to the nation and say, hey, remember where we came from. We were slaves in Egypt. God delivered us. God uh, gave us this land. God gave us rules and regulation for us to deal with one another. But yet the temple had already been corrupted also. The religious institution was so corrupted that the priests have led the people into what we call religious apostasy. So the, 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 the temple, uh, the priests at the temple, they were just leading people into that religious apostasy. They've abandoned God. They've abandoned all things about God. Yet they will have their big time of celebration. They will practice their religious rituals. They will practice ritual, but they did not consider uh, what God has required from them, which was to take care of the vulnerable, to take care of the poor, I, I think here I need to emphasize something. God's heart, God is concerned how we treat the poor. God is concerned about how we treat the oppressed amongst us. By the way, did you know that throughout the Bible, there are over 300 uh, passages of the Bible that talk about poverty. Over 300 uh, scriptures that, you know, the Bible mentioned 300 times about poverty in the Bible. Throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, you see the Bible mentioned about the poverty 300 times. And in the New Testament, about 250 times, Jesus talks about proper use of wealth and money. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I just have to be honest with you. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we are in a time where we, we, we've put uh, uh, some issues that we talk about. You know, for instance, we love uh, to talk about, uh, 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 you know, other moral issues. Uh, but, but when it comes to poverty, 300 times in the Bible, you see the word God is addressing the issue of poverty. And Jesus Christ, over 250 times in the New Testament, Jesus Christ talks about uh, the proper use of wealth. So what was taking place here in uh, the land in Samaria, in Israel, and uh, the, the, the poor were not uh, taken care of. Uh, pe people were abusing the poor. For instance, go to uh, verse uh, 4, 5, and 6. Verse uh, 4 uh, through 6. You see the kind of uh, dishonesty and the cheating that was taking place. The people here were using what we call false balances. They were using dishonest scale. You know, they were making money on the back of the poor. Look, let's read. Uh, it says what? Uh, hear this. You who swallow up the needy and make the poor of the land fail, saying, when will the new moon be passed that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath that we may trade with. All right? You, 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 you see, they, they were more concerned about the selling, about profit, about making money to the extent that even the Sabbath became an inconvenience for them. They will be there waiting for the time that the Sabbath will pass because you remember in the Old Testament at this time, when it is the Sabbath, Nothing was done in terms of commercial activities. Everybody was supposed to go to the temple and or go home and rest. It was the day of the Lord. But here you see them, they are grumbling. When will the Sabbath pass away? When will the Sabbath just finish the observation uh, 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 so that we can go back to our trade, you know? <laughs> so that we can go back to our trade. Now, God is saying, you swallow up the needy you know uh you you are using a false balance you are using a, a false balance you are cheating on the poor 
you know, God, God is noticing <laughs> that there was a kind of uh, injustice. There was injustice uh, taking place. Uh, cheating and dishonesty in business. Uh -huh. It is not a small sin. You know, some people may say, well, uh, that, that's not a big sin. You know, we live in a time where people have a tendency to minimize and say, this is not a big sin. Uh, this is a small sin. Uh, 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 we, we have a tendency to put a big and a small sin. Uh, before God, my brothers and my sisters, greed, greed is a big sin. You know, it's a big sin. In fact, before God, there is no small or big sin. When you sin, sin is a sin before the Lord. And God is concerned when people uh, 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 are, are, are participating. You know, uh, uh, people are cheating. God notice when people are cheating, dishonesty in business. All right? Uh, the, the way they were using the measurement. Uh, there was a chronic corruption, the cheating in the business world in this time. Uh, their scale was not honest. Uh, and, and they were doing this to the poor and the oppressed, taking advantage of the poor and the oppressed. Uh, their trade was not right. So God, 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 God says, I know, I know what you are doing and I will not forget. I know what you are doing. I will not forget what you are doing. And you know, sometimes we think, oh, maybe... Uh, I, I can do something and uh, maybe time, uh, you know, I can forget about my sin. Here we see God is reminding them that I'm not going to forget. Time can never erase the sin. Just because it has been a long time that uh, uh, this has been done, God says I will not forget. And this is kind of interesting because when you parallel this with the book of Hebrew, where God is saying, I will not forget your work. So in as much as we say God will not forget the good work that we do, let's also be aware that God does not forget the sin. The only things that can cover our sin before God is the work of Jesus Christ, is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ that cover our sin without the blood of jesus christ our sins will never be forgotten before god the sins that i've committed 10 years ago god will not forgive those sins. it is the blood of jesus christ that covers me from those sin so 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 for those of us who are in the lord we say that god will not forget our good work for uh, i want you to uh, see the parallel before we go further uh uh, check Hebrew chapter 6 verse 10. Uh, Hebrew, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 6 verse 10. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name. In that you have ministered to the saint and you have ministered to God's people. So God uh, does not forget the good works of his people. Inasmuch as we affirm this, this truth is also parallel. God does not forget the sins that people commit. So God is reminding Israel here and say, I'm not going to forget what you have done, what you have done to the poor. God is saying, I have seen your dishonesty. You are cheating uh, uh, in your business. You are cheating. Uh, you are taking advantage of the poor. You are not treating well the poor. All right. In fact, you are saying, okay, when will the uh, Sabbath pass so that we can go and continue about our trade? They were practicing an outward religion. Their religion was not inward, you know. They were there waiting for the Sabbath to finish. When I read this, it just really came to my attention, our attitude in the 21st century. You know how many times when we sit in the church there <laughs> and we are looking at our watch, we, we sit for one hour. Uh, and you know, uh, and then uh, we sit, uh, when we go above one hour, you know, oh, no, nobody wants to stay there anymore. So that's really connected and reminded me about uh, our practice, you know, how we, uh, 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 you know, uh, 
uh, afraid of sitting in church for a long time. <laughs> Even before the coronavirus, you know, we, we were just, just putting up one hour and then we go. So, so the same year, uh, the people were more concerned about their trade than they were concerned about their religion. Uh, they say, when will the Sabbath pass? You know, uh, when, when, when will the Sabbath yeah, and the, the new moon be, be passed? When, when will that finish? Let it finish. So it was like an inconvenience. The day of Sabbath was an inconvenient for them. Even though they will go there, they will observe it. Their heart was not into their worship. They were more concerned about their trade. They wanted to go there so they can sell the poor for a silver. You know, so they can uh, take advantage of the needy and sell them for a pair of sandals. So God is not pleased. In fact, even the product they were selling to the poor was something that was spoiled. It was not supposed to be sold. But yet, because of their love for uh, uh, money, because they wanted to accumulate profit, 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 they were even selling products that were not supposed to be sold. So this is how they were corrupted. And notice, God sees. God see. God saw and God was angry about what was taking place in the land. Let's be cognizant of that. That God sees. God sees what takes place in the land. Just let's be mindful of that. Uh, God sees what takes place in our lives. God sees how we treat one another. Let's just be cognizant. Let us be cognizant of the fact that God sees because that is very important in here. In chapter 8, God is reminding them through the prophet Amos that I see and I know what you have done. Uh, you know, I've noticed that. So, so that tells me that we really need to be aware of uh, uh, that God is not just an absentee landlord who sits from a distance and uh, it, uh, he forgets about whatever is taking place. God sees uh, whatever takes place. And, and sometimes there are things that hurt the heart of God, things that breaks the heart of God. They are things that really breaks the heart of God when we don't treat well the oppressed, when we don't treat well the poor, when we abuse our power, when we, uh, 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 when we don't practice in what really, when we, 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 we neglect what God requires from us, when we don't treat one another fairly, uh, God sees these things and they break the heart of God. So in the midst of their prosperity, the religious people were corrupted. The priests were corrupted because they were practicing religious apostasy. You know, religious apostasy is when you know the truth, but you don't walk in the light of that truth. You are doing the opposite of what you know is true. Instead of walking in the truth, you know, you know what is right, but, you know, because you want to fit in the culture, you want to be accommodated, uh, you know, you, you, you don't want to go against the popular culture. You sit with uh, whatever it is you legitimize, the abnormal. You make what is abnormal to become normal. You make what is uh, evil to become good. You justify it and you sit there in the midst of that company because you want that popularity. This is what is taking place. And we see Amos... Uh, with the voice of a minority is coming and say, ah, 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 this is wrong what we are doing here. God is going to judge. God is not happy for the things that we are doing. Pay attention. You know, seek God so that you may live. He's warning them. Now God is saying the time is up. This is the vision of the basket of ripe fruit. You know, uh, God is saying time is up. This is the basket. A basket of summer fruit. You know, they are already ripe, they are ready, and, and, and they are going to uh, rot them quickly. And, and once that happens, what do you do with the, a, a basket of summer fruit? What do you do with that? Because they are ripe, they are ripe already. They, so, so these are ripe fruit, and they get rotten quickly. So when they are rotten, what do you do with that basket of summer fruit? You throw it away. So God is saying, your time is up, the time is short. I am going to judge you. So let's be mindful about that as we uh, uh, pray for one another, as we pray for our nation, as we pray for the world. Let us be aware that there are things that uh, break the heart of God uh, when we don't treat 
one another right when we uh, oppress uh, the poor when we take advantage on the poor God is not pleased there are certain things that when they take place uh, God notice those things you know God is reminding Israel and say I will not forget your sin time can never erase your sin uh, I will remember your sin but thanks be to God because God does not remember our sins in Jesus Christ the works of Jesus Christ cover covers our sin the blood of the lamb covers our sin so in Jesus Christ that's the blessing of the New Testament God covers the sins the blood of Christ covers us you know when you stand before the Lord uh, God does not remember your sin anymore because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So uh, as, in as much as God remember, God says, I will not forget your sin. God is also saying, I will not forget your good work. When you do good, God says, I notice. So I just wanted to emphasize that. that remember, God sees. I really want us to remember that. God saw the injustice. The corruption, the dishonesty that was taking place, even in as something that secular that we may think, okay, this is it, this does not matter in business. God noticed that that the way they were dealing, because they were taking advantage of the poor, and they were making more money at the expense of the poor, the oppressed. They were suffering, and God is saying, no, 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 no. Uh, you're not supposed to do that. So God noticed even the little detail of our lives. So uh, I, I want us to remember chapter 8, the warning of God. God is saying, time is there. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to punish. I'm going to judge this. And then when you also notice in chapter 8, God is uh, saying, I'm going to use nature. God is going to use nature to take, uh, you know, to uh, get to our attention. Uh, God is saying, I'm going to use event in the vision that is giving Amos. God is saying, I'm going to use event in the nature to get your attention. Uh, so that my people can understand that I, God, who served them, who uh, uh, provided for them. Uh, they've rejected me. Now there are consequences for rejecting God. So the book of Amos is kind of a challenging book for us in the 21st century. Because as you begin to read this book and you compare our life, you begin to have that sense of wonder. Uh, is God pleased with our work here on earth? Is God pleased with our work here on earth? And thanks be to God for Jesus Christ. That through Jesus Christ, like I said, uh, we have the opportunity uh, not to be under the judgment of God because of Jesus Christ. But let us be reminded that God sees. And God saw the injustice. God sees whatever takes place in the world. All right? So God is involved in the world and God is uh, involved in each event that take place in the world. Uh, let's be reminded about that. And the other things I want us to remember, may we practice a religion that change our inward. Let us not just be concerned, focus on the outside and forget about the inside. Religion that pleases to God start inside. It brings that transformation inside. Let us not just be concerned about the outward uh, practice of our religion, uh, but yet let us allow our religion transform our heart. And let us become the people that God wants us to become. All right. So thank you again for this uh, uh, time that you share with me. Uh, God willing, uh, next Wednesday we will uh, do chapter 9. And that is going to be the last chapter of the book of Amos. And then we'll see uh, which other book we are going to uh, continue in our study. But uh, uh, today, around 6 in the afternoon, we will uh, be doing our discussion about uh, uh, chapter 8. Let's remember this, uh, uh, that uh, uh, that is very important. That uh, if you are able, join us via Zoom so that we can have uh, a good discussion. And God willing, next uh, Wednesday, we'll continue with chapter 9. Until we meet again. May the Lord continue to meet you at the point of your need. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen.